we are going to talk tech. Now, even though I usually talk about strategy and how to make money at podcasting, how to spread your word and grow your audience and build your authority, today I'm going to talk about something that I actually am quite fond of, and that's technology. Uh, now, whether or not you like technology, you don't, you don't have to be a huge tech buff to hear what I'm about to say, okay? I'm just going to tell you what I've used, why I like it, and my whole approach to the thing. Now, I'm not a huge audio person or video person per se. When I'm spending the money, I want to know the right things. What do I look for? Uh, and then compare, get the most value that I can, just like, just like I'm sure you feel the same way. Fortunately, I also grab some people that I know are good in those areas and ask them what their opinion is. And uh, again, you know, most of the people that you talk to, just make sure that they get the fact that you're, you know, you aren't going to spend a fortune with your first podcast. Please don't spend a for fortune with your first podcast. So my first microphone, Blue Yeti, okay? USB hooked right into my computer. Now, I did have my son come in who is a sound engineer and is very good at mastering and recording and all that. And he did help with a lot of our, our initial in-person interviews. And you know, we went through, we used um, GarageBand and and all that. And he had, you know, XLR cables everywhere and things like that. But for the most part, it was a Blue Yeti USB. Now, I'm also going to share some of the software. So if you're kind of glazing over because I'm talking about the hardware, believe me, this is not, this is my weakness. So I'm not going to talk about this very much. Um, so the next iteration, I, I had that Blue Yeti. I always tell people like, don't spend a bunch of money on the equipment in the beginning. You're in proof of concept. So just make sure that the content's really good. Do worry about strategy and, and uh, building a really good show in the beginning. The recording, just make sure. And my son, who is that audio engineer, he was like, just don't make it annoying. Like do whatever you can spend as little as possible, but just don't be distracting. Don't make it so that it makes it really difficult for the listener to listen to. So so keep that in mind when you're first starting out. Now, I will say that this year, uh, you know, we we all in, we went all in with podcasting <clears throat> and my Blue Yeti broke. So I have cute, two cute little granddaughters. I actually have three granddaughters and another on the way, but, but these two littles, and I have a grandson, uh, but the two littles, they love playing with my microphone and they broke the Blue Yeti probably about a year and a half ago. So, or not a year and a half ago, about a year ago. And so when you listen to Next Up Nation, the first couple episodes were <laughs> recorded and I literally had to have it on this like little pad and it was all propped up and the cord had to be just so or it wouldn't work. I would see notifications on Zoom. It's like, oh, I'm on a different microphone now. Oh, I'm on the webcam. Great. This is super. Speaking of webcam, I have the same Logitech webcam that I started with. So um, I, you know, the next upgrade will be a DSLR. But for now, this is still working. So always start with what you can and then move up as you know that it's an investment worth investing in. So we've been able to monetize our podcast, not use, you know, we don't use advertising, uh, but we do have other ways that we monetize. So with that, we've been able to invest in better audio equipment because we optimize for audio and then we add the video. Now, as we start to become more popular on video, then we will you know, upgrade our video. We've got plans for it. We've got a blueprint for it and, and we'll, we'll be doing that. With audio 2020, we did, you know, I did get my Shure SM7B, which um, I feel very blessed by my mastermind group. They called the Tiffany mic. <sighs> um, it's terrible. I know I'm, I'm terrible for loving that, but um, it, it is amazing. And I will say that this setup, even though it is more expensive, as soon as I switched over, other people who heard the difference also switched over. So I highly recommend it. It does have the XLR cables, so it does go through a Focusrite thing. Like I said, I'm terrible at the hardware, but, uh, and then we do have a cloud lifter. So we've got all these things. I've got a boom mic that does not, it's not hooked to the table, um, which, yeah, it's not hooked to the table. So it doesn't pick up anything, you know, this, I move my hands around, so it doesn't pick up on the sounds that I make uh, on the desk as I'm typing or things like that. It's independent. So um, it's one thing my son was like, get a boom mic, don't have it attached to your desk. So again, I trust him. So I did what he said. And I'm we're really, really happy with it. I've got a simple ring light for lighting. Uh, lighting is always another thing that I'm struggling with. So I would say if you're getting ready to invest more in video, 
go for better lighting before you go for a better camera unless you have a great deal for a camera and you can do that instead. So that's hardware. Again, I'm, you know, I am a layman. I don't even hook it up. Like that stuff just drives me crazy. So if you have any questions, um, definitely ask them and I will find the right people to answer your questions for you, but it's not me. Um, I just, I, I don't even, I don't even like it. Um, but what I do love is the, the software. So the software that we use is, um, you know, and I've seen a lot of conversations around, do I remove the ozonums? As you can probably tell, I say things like that quite a bit. Do we remove them? Do we not? In the original podcast, we did not remove that. We just kept everything intact. Then as we progressed and I started training people on our system, we did start removing the ohs and ums. I just feel like it provides a better listening experience for our audience. We do what I call a light edit. So we are just removing things that harm, you know, like I said earlier, my son told me like, just don't hurt people's ears. And so those filler words, a lot of times can be annoying. And so we remove those. Now, also having said that, now we, we use Descript. So there's a software called Descript. You can get it at Descript.com. And so the first thing that happens is we bring in the recording. It goes into that. You can edit the transcript. So it, it does a transcript. You edit the transcript. While you're editing the transcript, you can either edit the text or you can edit the text, video, and audio all at once. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll go in, we'll look at the transcript. Um, but we, the first thing we'll do is we'll hit, they have an automatic removal of ahs and ums. Nice, right? You could actually also you know, search and find and remove other words that you say a lot. Uh, I'll say awesome or uh, I don't know. I say a lot of weird things, but sometimes there are those words like I'll say so a lot. And so those will be removed. <laughs> now, as our editors, as our CV um, um, certified virtual production assistants or CVPAs, as they edit, they know that if something's been edited out, sometimes it will create a little click sound or it'll cut off a word. Those have to be put back in because that hurts my ears more than anything is over editing. So don't over edit. So even if you take those words out, go back. And if you're using Descript, you can actually just move. They have like a timeline like you might see in, um, you know, in Audition or another editing software. But I actually like it a little bit better because you can pull the audio and just see like you can put things back in. Sometimes it'll cut it and it'll, it'll add a little um, click. When, when an ah or an um is taken out, and then you can actually leave the ah or um out, but just fix it so that click is gone. Bottom line is, is we want it just to sound seamless. We want it to sound natural. So we will leave those filler words in if it harms the audio at all. So there's my tip about that. I'll talk more about other software that we use in future videos, but I hope that that was helpful when it comes to setting up your actual equipment, as well as um, Descript is a game changer, quite honestly. So there are a lot of other things that we use, I think that will make your life a lot easier and better. And I'll share with those, those with you later. So happy podcasting.